Are you afraid of death? Death can have a horrible sting to it. My guess is that if you're watching this video, you have experienced the loss of a loved one. Know the devastation that comes with it. You go your whole life taking them for granted, thinking that they'll always be here. You can call them whenever you want, visit them, hear their stories, share a meal with them. And then all of a sudden, they're gone. There is a finality to death, an ultimate nature to its devastation. At least, that's what people in the world say who don't believe in the resurrection. For the world, coming back from the dead is nothing more than a narrative trope. It's the superhero that just keeps finding ways to return from impossible missions to end up in the next sequel. It's the lazy writing of soap operas looking to do something dramatic to keep your attention. But in the end, they're just overused story points, fantasy plot devices, the work of shallow writers who are too afraid of death to force people to actually deal with it. In art and movies, we experience a momentary touch of sadness before everything ends up happily ever after. But the world does not believe this. It does not believe that rising from the dead is possible, that life can exist after death, that salvation awaits anyone. This is an obvious point, I think, and goes without saying, but what I really want to know is if Christians are actually any different. Do we really believe in the resurrection of the dead? Do we live our lives without fear of death and in hope for the future? Or do we quietly despair just like the rest of the world? Imagine for a second someone who you once loved that has passed away. I want you to remember their voice, see their face. Remember what it was that you loved about them. Let yourself long for their presence. Wish that they were there with you. And then remember that they are gone. Let yourself sink for a moment into the crushing reality that they are gone and that they are not coming back. You will never see them again. Pretty devastating, right? Pretty hopeless. You're trapped in an impossible situation, hoping for something that simply cannot happen. But what if it did? What if they truly could return right now wherever you are, to speak with you. What would you do if they actually did come back from the dead, look you right in the eye and say, it's good to see you. I love you. Some might scream with fear, which I understand. You might cry with joy. I get it. You might run up and hug them and never let go. Of course. If someone you loved was gone for good and came back, if you had accepted the finality of their death and been consigned to the sadness for the rest of your life, you would lose your mind if you saw them again. You wouldn't act like we do with TV cliches and movie tropes. This sort of thing would change your life. To know that death has been conquered, that what was impossible is now possible, it transform everything about us. What could we possibly fear at this point? Where would our sorrow be? That which caused us the greatest fear and sadness is no more. It holds no power over us. What could we do but live in complete freedom and joy the rest of our lives? This is not some hypothetical fantasy. This is Christianity, pure and simple. This is what we believe and this is how we should live. Jesus Christ, the Son of God himself, came to earth and offered himself as a sacrifice for the world. God, who cannot die, offered himself up to death so that he could conquer death. He returned a victor over death to show us that there was absolutely nothing left to fear. It's why St. Paul wrote to the Romans, We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. What Jesus did in the resurrection was not just for his own sake, but for ours. He died so that we might rise. It's for this reason he goes on to write, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. What is there to fear? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God raises us to new life, then death, where is your sting? Now, in asking this, Paul does not suggest that those who are baptized with Christ will experience no pain or hardship the rest of their lives. Jesus himself wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Sadness is normal. Sorrow does not betray our faith. What he does suggest, though, is that the tragedies we experience on earth will never have the final say. We may for a moment have to face the trials and tribulations of life, sure. We may have to endure the dark sadness of our loved ones passing, absolutely. But death will not win in the end. The reason I asked you to imagine your loved one returning to you was not to pour salt on the wound or play some cruel trick on you, but rather to help you name what our souls long for and what our faith proclaims. The dead will rise again. This is not wishful thinking or the work of fantasy. 
This is the very foundation of our faith, the very truth on which everything we believe rests. A truth that should, if we truly believe, help console us in our loss and give us certain hope for the future. It is not a matter of if we see them again, but when. The dead will rise again. Death is no more, and so there is no excuse for despair. For how could we claim to believe in the resurrection, truly believe in Jesus Christ, and yet still despair? When we do this, we do not think as God does, but as the world does. But I think it's more than just giving up our fear. There's another way of testing our faith. If we truly believe that Christ has conquered death, might we be able to reverse engineer this hope we now possess in letting go of our fear of future loss and instead trust completely in the work of God. I'm always confounded by the story of Abraham going up to sacrifice his son Isaac on the mountain. Here was his pride and joy, the one he had waited for so long, his only son. But when God asked Abraham to sacrifice him, Abraham didn't hesitate. Not because he didn't love his son, not because he thought that human sacrifice was a good thing, but because he trusted completely in God. He didn't even know yet of the resurrection, but he did know that God was loving and that he would protect Abraham unconditionally. That God was in control, and if God is in control, everything is going to be all right in the end. So he didn't question it. He just trusted. His faith was not challenged by God's request, but brought to fulfillment. How sad it is to see Christians acting in just the opposite way. How many people I've met in my life who have lived after the resurrection of Christ who claim to believe in it, lose their faith at the loss of a loved one. How could God do this to me, they ask? How can I believe in a God who would take my child, my mother, my wife, my friend? In these situations, our words claim to believe in the work of God, but our actions betray us. Our fear calls us out. Our lack of trust, clinging to our own control in the world, shows that we do not fully believe that Christ really rose from the dead for the life of all. Christ, there may still be sadness and pain for a moment, but there is no room for despair, no place for fear. Despair and fear are contradictions to everything we proclaim when we celebrate the Eucharist. When we participate in the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, when we receive his body and blood into ourselves, we emphatically proclaim his power over death. We stand in defiance of the world that tells us that we must give up, that there is no hope, that there is only darkness and death, and we stand and say, no. Despite it all, we fix our eyes on the cross and we find hope to persevere. As Christians, as people who claim to believe in the resurrection, we cannot fear death like the rest of the world. We must embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace it without fear, without despair, knowing that it is the source of life because we live with the certainty of the resurrection. Death can have a horrible sting to it for some people, but not for those who believe.